We began this construction project by dismantling an old trailer house that was on the job site. It only took a few days and uh, we managed to reuse or recycle about 80% of the materials in the structure. Then we excavated a hole for the basement of the new house and re recycled the lumber and paneling from the trailer house in order to build a formwork to pour the footings. The insulation factory near us used to throw all of their scraps out on a big free pile and we hauled home many many truckloads of those panels then sliced them in half with a hot wire and improvised our own insulating concrete forms around two sides of the basement. The south and east facing walls would be exposed above ground so we put the insulation along the inside of the wall and went up the outside of the wall with concrete and stone. On the north side we left a couple of gaps in the wall so we could tie in support walls that would later bear the weight of the fireplace on the main level. We purchased insulating concrete forms to uh, form up these two little support walls, which cost as much as the rest of our formwork for the basement put together. The big challenge with our improvised insulating concrete forms was to feed all the tie wires through from one panel to the other. We used lots of recycled 2x4s and 2x6s to hold the whole thing together, and then we called everybody we knew to help come pour the concrete. We did have one blowout during the pour, but fortunately it was in a short section of wall where it was easy to repair the damage and shovel the concrete back in. Next, we built window frames from the scrap insulation panels, then installed them on the walls and started doing stonework up around them. We built the house with the aid of students and interns that came to learn slip form stone masonry and other alternative building methods. We constructed a deck on the east side of the building from scrap metal recycled from the old trailer house that used to be on the site. On the inside, we hauled in a little more fill dirt and leveled the floor, then tamped it down hard. We covered the floor with a layer of plastic, then rolled out tubing for radiant heat and covered it up. I used a log wizard to peel the bark off of the long beam that would span the entire length of the house. We installed support logs underneath it and then rolled the cross beams in place, fitted them carefully, and pinned them together with rebar. Once all the logs were leveled, then we installed 2x6 tongue and groove decking to make a solid floor from above and a beautiful ceiling from below. Next we did a little more stonework to bring the stone walls up level with the top of the floor. When the forms come off we always have to go back and chip off any extra concrete on the face of the wall. And back on the inside, we made our own terra tiles out of sand, cement, dirt, and dye, which we later came back and grouted with a mix of fine sand, cement, lime, and waste paint. We hauled home many more loads of scrap insulation panels and started work on the main level of the house. We constructed the walls out of six inch thick panels first, then hotwired the scraps and added another three inches to the outside of that. It is important to keep the wall moist to help the concrete cure properly. Window frames must be carefully leveled and secured in place before concreting up around them. We found a set of old stairs at the dump that we incorporated into our scaffolding system. By the time winter hit, we had made substantial progress on the main level of the house.
In the spring of 2006, we started out by building a cinder block wall out of junk cinder blocks that would later be hidden behind the fireplace. Then we got serious about the stonework and finished up the walls for the main level of the house. We originally intended to do stonework at the base and then transition into straw bale for the rest of the structure, but we never found a good place to make the transition, so we ended up doing stonework all the way to the top, which is very beautiful, but also turned out to be very labor intensive. Every rock and every bucket of concrete has to be lifted up and up and up to the top of the house. The funny thing is that passers-by didn't always know that it was new construction and started asking us if we were fixing the old place up. We built a loft in the back half of the building, leaving open ceilings in the front half. I chose to build this barn-style roof partly to get the spacious loft upstairs, but also to reduce the spans between the beams so that we could bridge across the top with our insulation panels and not have wood framing cutting through the insulation of the roof. New insulation panels would have spanned from beam to beam all in one shot, but with our scrap pieces we had to create a sandwich with OSB on the inside and the outside and two layers of six inch thick panel scraps sandwiched in between them. We mixed up two part pour foam to fill up any voids in the insulation. To attach the second layer of insulation panels, we had to use 8 inch long screws that would connect from one panel through to the other. To hide the edge of the insulation, we built rim boards entirely out of scrap lumber hauled home from the dump. Although low cost and very well insulated, the roof turned out to be a very labor intensive project, which we spread out over most of a summer. I got a good deal on some heavy-duty steel roofing from a local recycling center and then added a few thin rusty pieces for trim on the front and back. We installed new windows and added barnwood trim to close in this main part of the house. In 2007, we started by framing the interior walls with recycled lumber from the dump, and then we roughed in the plumbing and electrical work. I wish I could say that we were on the home stretch of this project by now, but instead we excavated on the south side of the house and poured extra wide footings to support the double stone walls of the greenhouse. With all the experimental design and construction aspects of this house, it turned out to be significantly more labor intensive than the first stone house that we built, and I am immensely grateful for all the help of everyone that came along to participate in the process. Fortunately, the sloping south face of the greenhouse gave us a lot of room on the floor with relatively little stonework going up. The greenhouse has six inches of beadboard insulation sandwiched in between the two stone walls and pieces of rebar skewered through the insulation to tie the two stone walls together. Believe it or not, just about all of the rocks in this house came out of the hole that we dug for the basement. The only problem was that we used the big rocks first, being stuck with smaller and smaller rocks as we went up. We installed a couple of heavy beams across the front and then built the window frames out of rough cut lumber. 
We constructed the greenhouse roof the same as the house roof with two layers of scrap insulation panels sandwiched between two layers of oriented strand board or OSB. We also built and installed a couple of solar water heaters into the south face of the greenhouse such that the hot fluid could thermosiphon to a tank up in the loft. Concurrent with the greenhouse construction project, we also built the front porch on the west side of the building using junk cinder blocks underground and stonework above ground. The front porch is also insulated and serves as an airlock to the front door of the house. Back on the inside, we plastered the walls with a mix of secondhand plaster, joint compound, tile grout, and paint acquired from thrift stores. Then we sifted more dirt and made terra tiles across the entire main level of the house. We installed an old bathtub and stuccoed the shower surround and later came back and sealed it with a coat of white epoxy. In the kitchen we installed some secondhand cabinetry, reinforced it well, and then poured concrete fly ash countertops on top of that. In 2008, we really did not do that much on the house, but we did wrap up some of the finishing details, including a handcrafted stairway up to the loft. In appearances at least, the house looks almost finished. We installed an experimental gray water treatment system in the greenhouse and started planting crops. We installed tile work on the landing going down to the basement, as well as tiles in the wide window wells throughout the house. In the spring of 2009, we constructed the masonry fireplace in the main room of the house. It has six horizontal runs through the baffle system that extract heat from the smoke before it goes up the chimney. Building the fireplace turned out to be a bigger project than I had anticipated, requiring the full-time labor of two people for six weeks to build it. But the end product was worth the effort as the fireplace became the centerpiece and the heart of the home. In the fall, we took on the last major building project on this house, which was to tie in the garage with the house. The original steel garage was kind of cattywampus with both the house and the street, so we started by squaring out the slab and then basically built the new garage while the old garage was still in place and full of stuff. Rather than do the whole thing in stonework, I built two walls out of cinder blocks, which I obtained for free from the scrap pile at the factory, and then added a little bit of stonework at the corner to visually tie it together with the house. Only the front wall of the garage was built entirely of stone. We built the new garage while simultaneously dismantling the original one. Then we mixed up some stucco mortar and stuccoed over the cinder blocks to get an end product that has some of the beauty of the stone masonry but with a lot less labor. 
We put a false front on the garage and then constructed a shallow sloping roof hidden behind it. Inside the garage, we built frame walls out of scrap lumber and insulated the lower section with sawdust and lime and the upper section with fiberglass insulation salvaged from the dump. I added an insulated garage door and that about wraps it up.